Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Are you ready for another exciting day here at Time Lab? Well, hey, I'll be ready in just a minute. You know what? After I heat up, I've got some food I need to heat up. I kind of was in a rush and didn't get a chance to eat breakfast, so I need, I'm a little hungry, so I'm going to put this in the microwave and warm it up, okay? I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay. Good morning, Ma. Oh, oh, good morning, Dr. Mister. How are you today? Oh, I am wonderful. I've been working all night long on a brand new invention. Wonderful. I love to hear about your inventions. Oh, well, well. Um, I am so excited. I've been, uh, it's, it's a fantastic new invention. I, uh, I just got to thinking, what if I invented a machine that would be able to heat food very rapidly and be able to cook it so quickly of course, we have ovens, but I think we could use, perhaps, uh, instead of just heat in the oven, we could use microwaves to heat the food uh, and call it a microwave oven. It would be much faster than a normal oven. Yes, that's fantastic, Dr. Mister. But it's a great idea. But let me tell you this. Um, you know, this would be wonderful back in Bible times, wouldn't it? Oh. To have your food ready, you wouldn't have to go out and oh, take absolutely. all that time and create a fire and, and cook that. But guess what? We're going to talk about a Bible account where Abraham and his wife prepared a meal uh, for some very interesting guests who came by, strangers who they didn't even know. And I'm sure it took them a very long time to prepare their meal. Oh, I know, I know. That's why the microwave oven that I have invented will be so useful. There's just one problem, Dr. Mister. The Why? microwave oven has already been around. It's it's a great idea, but it's already been invented. <sighs> you know, somebody has already invented it. His name was Percy Spencer. Matter of fact, we have one right here. This is a microwave oven, Dr. Mister. And he was testing something during World War II and working on a military-grade magnetron, uh, to, to be exact. And he realized that the candy bar he had in his pocket had suddenly melted. And he was curious to see if the melted candy bar had anything to do with the invention he was working on and testing out. So he stuck an egg in the, in the machine, and guess what happened? Kaboom! Yes, kaboom a taboom. It exploded right in his face. I guess he had egg on his face. <laughs> <laughs> well, next he tried some popcorn kernels, and guess what happened? Kapop! A de pop! Kapop a de pop is just right. Those kernels popped in the microwave oven, and which was first called a radar range, was now born. So, does this mean I must go back to my laboratory? And think of a new invention? Yes, sir, it does. But you know, I really appreciate that you're always working on inventions, Dr. Mister. But don't give up. Keep working out there on it, and I'm sure you'll come up with just the right thing. Here, by the way, you can oh, have my food. Wonderful. And you'll need it for today because we're learning about a big word that describes when Jesus appeared to people during the Old Testament. That word is Christophany. Could you say Christophany, but not while you're eating? Let me tell you, uh, Dr. Mister, as he's enjoying his food, we're going to continue on. As Let's see what we're going to learn about next. I think it's time for some music, but let's go over the Bible verse for our theme verse again. It says, this is from Revelation 1.8, if you'll say it with me. I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Again, that's Revelation 1.8. Wonderful. Let's sing that song again. Says the 
Hey folks, welcome back. Glad you're here to join us for our mission moment now. As we learned yesterday, our mission project for the week is called It's About Time. We're working together to raise meals that cost only 25 cents to help children who are hungry and hurting all over the world. You know, every quarter we raise for Children's Hunger Fund will provide one meal for a child or a kid just like you. These meals will be delivered by local church volunteers who care for them and want to share the good news of the Son of God. Well, you know the clock is ticking. How many of you have started already to collect coins for, that, for the meals for the children already? Oh, fantastic! I'm so proud of how many meals we've already raised. Um... And we'll hear the, that number today after we travel in time to our next destination for the day. Remember yesterday's report about Esther in Haiti? Well, today we're meeting another special child, this time from the European country of the Ukraine. His name is Dmitry. Like Esther, Dimitri and his family lost their home, but Dimitri was forced out of his home after war began in Ukraine in 2014. Since the family had to leave their home, Dimitri's dad has not been able to find a job, and his family does not have enough money to buy food or fix the heater in the new place where they are living. So let's learn more about Dimitri and how we can help children just like him by going back in time with Dr. Win It. You're here again! What a fun surprise! You'll have to excuse me, I just got finished running my time lapse. <laughs> I'm trying to see if it's possible to time travel if I run fast enough. So far, it's just made me want to travel back to a time when I was in better shape. <laughs> my name is Dr. Wen the Second, but you already knew that, didn't you? <laughs> Here's something you might not know. On the continent of Europe, there's a country called Ukraine. This clock tower is in Ukraine. It was built all the way back in the 1800s. That's a long time ago. Not quite so long ago, I met a boy named Dmitri who lives in Ukraine. Telling his story requires my favorite thing, traveling back in time. Let's visit Ukraine a few years ago. In 2014, a war started in Ukraine that forced many people out of their homes. We call people who don't have a place to live refugees. Can you imagine having to leave the place where you live now? Dmitri was one of the people who had to move. His family was only able to take one suitcase of their belongings. Dmitri even had to leave his favorite toy behind. Now Dmitri lives in a new town, far from where he grew up. His father has had a hard time finding a job since there are so many other people looking for work in the same place. Winters are cold in Ukraine and the heater in Dmitri's home didn't work. But there is good news. Not far from Dmitri and his family is a church. A couple of volunteers from the church heard that Dmitri's family doesn't have a lot of money for food. So they began to visit them with Children's Hunger Fund food packs. Because of these food packs, Dimitri's family was able to save money to fix their heater. Now they don't have to sleep in the cold anymore. But these volunteers don't just bring food. They have also started a friendship with Dimitri and his family. They invited them to church, and now Dimitri has friends he can play with. And the very best part? Dimitri is learning about God, the great I Am, who is in control of everything. Dimitri has learned he doesn't have to be scared of living in a new place because God is with him through all time, no matter where he goes. This is all thanks to you. 
When you raise money for meals, food packs can be filled and Children's Hunger Fund can send more food packs to churches like the one that helped Dimitri and his family. Don't forget, every quarter equals one meal. And every meal means another chance for kids like Dimitri to hear about Jesus and how he can conquer every fear. Well, that's it for me today. I need to do a few more laps. Maybe some time crunches will help. No time like the present. Well, Dimitri and his family were forced to flee from their home right after war had broke out in the Ukraine back in 2014. You know, it's very cold during the winter time there in the Ukraine, and the heater in Dimitri's home is broken. Not only that, Dimitri's dad has been unable to find work in the new community that they've had to move to after this disaster. There is not enough money to buy food for them or to have a heater. You know, Dimitri must be very scared in this new place that he is living. In an uncomfortable home without enough food. But there is a church near Dimitri's new home. A few volunteers from the church heard from Dimitri that he and his family were refugees and started to visit them in their house with food packs. Since they are receiving meals, they have been able to save money to buy a new heater. Dimitri now goes to church where he has made friends and heard about the God who is in control of everything. Even Dimitri's life has changed. His hope can rest in the great I Am who never changes. Amen to that. As I mentioned earlier, there are many other children just like Dimitri who are going through difficult times and they need our help. It's time for us to raise meals so that they too can hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ and find hope in him. You know, it's awesome that you were doing a wonderful job of preparing uh, resources so we can feed these people and, and provide for those people in need. But don't forget to bring those coins and, and fill up those boxes and keep delivering food uh, to help those hungry people around the world. Thank you so much. It's Creature Feature time, folks, so now we're going to talk about a lamb today. Because our animal pal is Lottie the Lamb, first of all. Do you know the difference between a lamb and a sheep? Do you? Well, a lamb is a young sheep. Less than a year old, a sheep is like a teenager or an adult in age. Now, how about this question? What's a you? Me? No, not you, but a you. A you? Oh, do you know? A you is actually a girl sheep. Next question I have for you. How about a ram? Do you know what a ram is? A ram is actually a boy sheep. And so when a boy sheep talks to a girl sheep, he says, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, very funny, Dr. Mister. So now let's travel back in time to when you were just a toddler. Now here's a question for you. What sound does a lamb make? Do you know? Say it loud. A lamb says, bah. But did you know that when female sheep bah for their young, each young lamb can identify his particular mama by the sound of her bah. God gave each of them a unique bah, and, God, and he gave lambs the ability to recognize that. Now think about this. What is something from a lamb that we use? Well, you know, I like a nice cold glass of lamb's milk. You can drink milk that comes from ewes. And we can use the milk to make cheese. We can also eat lamb or mutton as meat. You know, something else we can do. We can use their wool to make yarn. In oh. fact, 
one pound of wool can make 10 miles of yarn. Wool is the most commonly used fiber in the whole world. Some of your clothes that you wear come from wool. And here are just a handful of other cool things that we can make from various parts of lambs and sheep. Instrument strings, charcoal, shampoo, and conditioner. Piano keys. Did you know that? I didn't. Maybe something, a favorite tree of yours might be marshmallows. It actually comes from lambs or sheep. Fertilizer. How about crayons, candles, makeup, shaving cream, and even hand lotion. Very interesting. Well, now on to a different note. Raise your hand if you've ever thrown up. <laughs> Listen to this. Sheep throw up on a daily basis. Oh. They are ruminant animals. This means that they eat their food in stages. We eat food, and it goes to our stomach, right? Well, they have a specialized stomach with four compartments. The fir but first, they chew and swallow the food, and it goes into one compartment. Then they throw up. Ugh, disgusting. They chew, and they re-swallow the partially digested food known as the cud. Ugh. Guess what? And guess what? They spend about one-third of their lives ruminating. When lambs are born, all four chambers of their stomachs aren't quite developed yet. But it doesn't take long before they're busy chewing their cud. And boy, do they love the taste of grain. What's your favorite candy? Well, grain is like candy to them. But they also eat leaves. God designed them with a split in their upper lip, which allows them to pick their favorite leaves off of plants. Hmm. Amazing. Well, let's transition a little bit. You know, the Bible does talk about lambs and sheep over 200 times. The lamb is even used as a title for Jesus. Did you know that? The Lamb of God. You know, in John 1.29, we find that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I wonder why Jesus is called the Lamb of God. Hmm. Well, in the beginning, after Adam and Eve sinned, God killed an animal, at least one animal to make clothes for, to, to the, for them to cover what they had done. Since that time, people sacrificed animals, often lambs, to cover their sin. But the blood of lambs can take away sin once and for hmm. all. Only someone who is like us, but perfect, could give himself in our place and take the punishment for sin that we each deserve. Jesus is called the Lamb of God because he sacrificed himself on our behalf. He is the last and perfect sacrifice. Very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Mister. You know what, folks? As we wrap up our lesson for the day, and we want to close with some time of prayer. So would you join me as we take time to pray and thank God? Lord, we just thank you for this day and how we've discovered how uh, Jesus is at work and has been at work, not only uh, today, but in times past, and how he was the Lamb of God. He was the sacrifice for our sins. And uh, we are to be thankful for what he has done for us. Lord, we just pray that uh, for those listening in today and this week that you would uh, speak to our hearts and help us to know how much you love us and that you sent your son Jesus to save us from our sins and that we need him uh, to forgive us. Lord, we uh, pray your blessing over our time each date uh, this week and that you would help us to grow in knowing more about you and loving you more as we discover how much you love us. In Christ's name. Let's close, and with our verse for the day, comes from Hebrews 13, 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Let's say it together. Jesus, Jesus, Christ, Christ, is the, Jesus Christ is the, is the same, same yesterday, today, and, and forever. forever. 
Hebrews 13, 8. Wonderful. Let's sing a song about that. Yesterday and today and forever. 